there is just something satisfying about painting a landscape. In this case, in this case, it's a winter landscape, a snow covered place with an icy river. Maybe that river is frozen or maybe it's flowing, but there's some warmth in the sky in the background. And there's some warmth of that sky reflecting off the snow, but it still is clearly a cold winter day, at least here in the Northern Hemisphere. <laughs> or maybe it's close to the North Pole in the summer or close to the South Pole in the winter. Did I say that right? I always get it mixed up. Hey, I want to talk to you a little bit about this video that you're about to watch as a tutorial. Now, I don't think I'm a great teacher, but I know that some of you use the videos as tutorials. And so my message to you is this. If you want to paint, replicate this painting, feel free. Don't, don't think I'm going to have a hard time with you using this as a reference. I won't. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be flattered. You go and have fun because you know why? Cause God really painted that. I don't mean the paper. I mean, I painted the paper, but I mean the, the landscapes, everything that's in my head about what makes a beautiful landscape is there because I've either seen it in person or seen it in a photograph. But what I'm looking at is really God's creation. I'm just attempting. I'm just attempting to recreate it. And in this case, to put it on a card, <laughs> a greeting card. Um, so as far as the video goes, the tutorial part of it is not necessarily about painting this exact picture, but rather about the elements in the picture. You know, the, the hazy background with the loose watercolor the um the darks versus the lights the trees with snow on them which is basically just dark blue or dark brown or black and then you use white for the snow most of the snow by the way in this picture is not white most of it is a very very washed out blue um, with some exceptions where i let the paper shine through i wanted to tell you all of that before the video actually started the you know, the part where I show you how I did this. Because if you are skipping through the rest of it, which I would if I were you, unless you just like watching me paint, which I do, you know, I watch other videos of other artists painting and it, it depends, you know, what they're painting. Sometimes I'll watch the whole thing or, or sometimes not, you know. Anyway, for whatever reason you're here, first of all, thank you for being here. Thank you for liking and subscribing and all those things that help support the channel, keep it healthy as a lot of learning about video making and YouTube also. Robin and I have another YouTube channel called The World Spins Fine on Her Own, but that's kind of like a blog or a vlog. You know, it's just us going around with the camera. But anyway, all right, I've talked enough. Let me show you how I painted this. Thank you for being there. Thank you for your kind words in the comments. And, I'll, and don't forget there's a, um, a Facebook group called For Papa Paints. And I'm going to review it again. I did uh, maybe a month or so ago, maybe more than a month now, but I'll do that soon. All right, let's watch this video. Thank you for watching. Sometimes it is the most satisfying subject, landscapes. And just covering a little bit of the background with water because I want, I want it to be hazy. I want it to be that very distant look that watercolor seems to be able to do naturally. So the, the idea here is to get the background wet and not just wet, but actually soaked into the paper 
some artists uh, will wet their paper completely, like both sides of it. I don't, well, I have done that with larger paper, but with um, these little cards, I don't know. It just seems like this works okay. So I just got to give it a little time to soak in. And once it soaks in, then I can go ahead and push some color into it. And that's what I want to do. So, I'm going to add, let's, let's go ahead and uh, use the back of the card as my, as my palette. Let's get some of these yellows in there, I think. A little bit of yellow. Just a haze, a little bit of hazy yellow. No, not too much, just a tiny bit. Yeah, that's all I want to do, a little bit. Then I want to take a little bit of the uh, pink, the pale pink. Just kind of put it in there. Give us a very satisfying sky here. A distant haze. I'm going to go ahead and pull some some mauve, more purple, some purple, a little bit of purple. Yeah, spread it out there. So you see what I'm doing? I'm kind of graduating. I'm getting it lighter over there and darker over here. This is all for the background. Just to kind of create somewhat of a background there. And it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. No, it doesn't. All right. Now, let's go ahead and get some of this very light blue, very watered down blue. Yeah, that's good. Very watered down. I'm just gonna put this, now this is wet on dry. Now we're just putting this down for the snow. I get a little bit of blue. A little bit of blue. I know it's hard to see it maybe on the video. Oh, yesterday we um, we did a little video, Robin and I, to show the cards that I've painted so far for the art auction. And I wanted to tell you that I had been saying all along that the cards, the auction was to raise money for the people in need. And they're having an art the church is having an art, what do they call it, a Christmas craft show. And that's what that's for. I didn't realize, and I made a mistake. I asked Robin about it later on. I said, I thought we were painting for people in need. And, and the church always does things for people in need. But this particular art auction, which I apologize for getting it wrong, but that's just me. I'm always getting stuff wrong, it seems like. But the um, art auction is actually for the youth gathering in Texas or something like that. I don't really know. I should. I really shouldn't say what I don't know. But I thought I did know in this case. So I apologize for. I wasn't trying to mislead anybody. My gosh, that's the last thing I would do. But anyway, so yeah. The, the cards that I'm painting, that I've been painting, are for the uh, the the youth gathering in Texas. It's some kind of a, a thing. the 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 church that I go to is also a school. They have a, I guess it's a grade school through. <laughs> see, I don't even know this. I shouldn't even tell you this. It's a school. I think it's um 
I think it's kindergarten through 12th grade, I think. I hate to say when I don't really know. But anyway, so yeah, the, the money that's raised from the auction, which doesn't really change anything that I'm doing. You know, it's just that I, I missed, I misunderstood in November, there's a craft show. And then there's also <clears throat> the art show. It's two different things. What do I know? What do I know? I know nothing. I know nothing. I know nothing. Nothing. I'm trying to put a little bit of blue in here. But it's a pretty blue. All right. Just grab some of these colors here. working it working it this is like a little river here I know you saw the the opening picture so you know that already so how you guys doing yeah I'm almost up to 200 I we, we counted them yesterday and it was like 180 180 cards but I feel like some of those cards I don't really want to include because some are what I call doozies, you know, they didn't come out as nice as I wanted them to. Um, yeah, so I'll probably remove some of those cards and bring it down to 170 and then I'll have, you know, like 30 more cards I need to make. But I better hurry because it's more, it's less than a month away now. Because today's the twenty fourth, and uh, November twenty fifth is the uh, is the art auction. So you know, I mean, I, I guess my way of looking at it is if I don't if I don't quite have if I don't quite have two hundred, I'm not going to worry about it. But that was my goal to have two hundred. I guess if I keep the crappy ones in there. And I'll have 200. You know, and I've clear, clearly painted more than 200. It's just that I gave, I gave a bunch of them away. And if you were watching way back when I first started, I, I didn't even have the, the art show as a goal. I was just painting and giving cards away. So that's what that's about. That's what that's about. This is a snowy landscape. I think snowy landscapes are very satisfying to paint. They're almost magical. Snowy, snowy and icy. back here. There's a hint of trees. Let the water 
do its thing. Sometimes it's, sometimes when you do distant trees like this and you want it to have that hazy look, it's it's good just to do the tops of the trees and and then worry about the the watercolor just doing its thing. Sometimes just the tops is all you need because that haze is kind of hanging toward the ground. Little by little, little by little, we get it done. use some some of the darker colors a smaller brush put some of the the fine lines in there
right. <coughs> Let's go ahead and use the uh, slightly bigger brush. Let's see, how about this one? A little bit bigger. that dry, get it all watery looking, washed out. Still trying to create a dark distance here, like a deep area. And now I get some white. A lot of this depends on the water just doing what it does. 
if you were painting in acrylics or oil, you would be more inclined to, to place the paint exactly where you want it. But I think with watercolor, sometimes we have kind of this magical thing that happens that allows you to, um, to not worry about it being specific and then letting the water color just kind of move around and maybe show you things that you didn't think of, which is what's happening right now. There are some things in here I didn't think of, but the water is sort of showing it to me. Places here that I can see that I hadn't envisioned. I'm usually not good at envisioning anyway. Um, if I was going to recommend anything, it would be, well, okay, I'm going to say this. I would say get a reference photo. <laughs> That's the first thing, you know. But if you've done a lot of them, and I've done a lot of them, you probably can get away with making stuff up. And that's kind of the way Bob Ross was. He had specific ideas in his mind. And then he would use those elements, like the mountains and the trees, and he would paint from them. And I don't know if I'm speaking out of line, but that's what it looks like when I watched him. It looked like he was just saying, put some trees here and put some clouds there. And it's kind of what he was famous for. And it was brilliant. What he did was brilliant. So, and all of his paintings are unique. They're similar, but unique. When I walk through uh, an art show, I often will notice that each artist has his or her own style, and yet every painting is different. So they're not all the same, but they're all similar. And I've been told that about my paintings also, is that they are, they have a look to them. And it's funny, you don't see your own, you don't recognize your own look, you know? sort of have it here already but not quite I'm not quite there yet After I get done with the 200, I'm going to start another project. I, I'm toying with the idea of moving away from doing the cards and, and maybe doing some larger paintings. I'm not sure what I want to do. I'm already doing larger paintings in the in the digital because of the art assignments I have for the for the children's books. But I mean, with actual paint with uh, traditional, as we say, right? Traditional. Traditional paint. Hey, I got a, um, a note from somebody in New Zealand. And I just want to say thank you for watching way over on the other side of the world. It's not winter there. It's getting to be summer, right? We, we have opposite seasons. Isn't that right? I think. Yeah. I've never been, I have never been far. Let's see, the farthest I've been away from the east coast of the United States is California. Yeah, I've never been to Europe. But 
I'd like to go. I've definitely never been to Australia and New Zealand, but I'd like to go. Tokyo, I just hear so much about Japan. A lot of these watercolor techniques are from Japan. You know, they're, they're inspired by art in the Asian countries. Why don't we let artists rule the world? All these dictators and people who don't create, people who don't create, they destroy. And I'm not gonna get into it, I'm sorry, but just, we have so many things in our history that are just all about destruction. It's just, it's a shame really that the human race couldn't figure out how to behave. Or maybe we are, maybe we're just not there yet. I don't know. Who am I to say? Who am I to say? Huh? Some tiny little trees here. Just waiting for the winter to be done so they can come back to life. I think landscapes are just enjoyable. They're very, they're very um, meditative. I think I, I think I go into a trance sometimes when I'm doing paintings in general, but landscapes specifically because, like a portrait, you have to focus so much on making sure every little thing is right. So it looks like the person, but in a landscape, you can take the opportunity to make mistakes and then it's, it's a happy mistake or a happy accident. Just, just have some fun with it, you know, it's kind of, kind of really cool thing about it. I'm not even sure what I'm doing now. But it's starting to look good, I guess, right? Let's put some more foreground things here with the intent of putting snow on these branches.
If there's anything about this video that can be viewed as a tutorial, it is not necessarily paint this like this. It's more of the philosophy of of allowing your the, your creative side, your, your creative self, to just have fun, to just take the paint and kind of maybe have an idea like. In this painting, for example, I had an idea what to start with. You know, I've done snow snow landscapes before, so I kind of knew what I wanted, but it didn't come out exactly as I had in my, in my mind. But rather than considering it a mistake when something wasn't exactly what I had in mind, I looked at what was there and I said, oh, well, that looks good anyway even though it's not exactly what I had in mind. And so that's kind of what I mean. If you if you just let the watercolor do its thing, and you know, you could, it doesn't have to be watercolor. Um, I've used pastel and, and sometimes even, even just, <laughs> there's a loud motorcycle, sometimes just um, even like pencil and charcoal, although I think watercolor has a tendency to be more likely to um, do things by itself just because it flows the way it flows and it dries the way it dries. You know, that's I think probably something to consider too. Although, you never know, you know, just have fun. I think the more you do it, the more you'll, you'll you'll grasp what I'm saying about just letting it do its thing. And just whatever you've developed, um, maybe you've got a skill for doing snow scenes or um, or people. I do a lot of people because of the children's books. But those are assignments, and these, these are assignments too. These are like self-assigned, especially since deciding I wanted to do these cards for the church. I still feel bad that I was telling you this were for hurricane victims. They, the church does raise money for hurricane victims, and that's what they're doing right today, I think. They have some kind of thing they're doing, but I was wrong about this. The art, the um, craft show is for the um, the, the uh, needy children. What they do is they um, find kids who have no parents or parents who are incarcerated, which is sad too. It's real sad. Robin's mom did that for years. She worked through what they call an angel tree. And people would pick a name off of a of a tree in the you know in the front of the church there'd be a, a tree with names on it and uh, that that child who or the parent who, whoever made the card would say specifically that the child would like a, this particular game or that particular kind of a shoe shoes were important to kids I never realized I wasn't one of those kids it's just what they call them sport shoes or whatever, running shoes. So. Kind of a cool looking picture now, isn't it? You sort of want to be in this place.
You know, they used to call New York the city that never sleeps. I think the whole world never sleeps now, because it doesn't matter what time I wake up, I'm always hearing a siren or a motorcycle or something out there. Do you hear that siren? I mean, it's only 5.30 in the morning. So I think the whole world never sleeps. I think I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm building a whole forest here. It's not a happy little tree, it's a happy little forest. <laughs> well, I think that's what I want to do. Let's see over here. Put some more like little lines for grass growing through the snow. See what I mean? Can you hear that siren? time it was eerie sounding silent eerie silence was when a hurricane was coming through there was the wind but everything else was so silent it was an eerie feeling especially because the weatherman was showing this very ominous <laughs> massive weather coming our way and thank you God for sa keeping us safe Yeah, that's really who I thought we were painting for when I heard about the fundraiser. And they are, they are doing that. I miss, I just misunderstood them. Take a softer brush and move that around a little bit. Okay, there's our winter scene. Let me go ahead and spread the, the color on the back of the card. And I'm gonna debate about whether to put some snow flakes, just a few dots, I think. Not a heavy snowflake thing. You know, even though we live in Florida, most of the people 
I think, at the church were they used to live someplace where we get snowy in the winter, so a lot of them like that imagery of winter. And a lot of them like the imagery of a tropical beach, too. <laughs> well, and I've done a bunch of them. It's just that when I got closer to the Christmas season, I wanted to kind of focus on... Yeah, let me pull some of that up there. Some of that color. I wanted to focus a little bit on the, the traditional winter scenes, you know? The snow and, and all that. All right, let that dry. I want to add, I think I just want to add a couple of dots of, of snowflakes. I'll take a very small brush. I just want to add a few. Just if you look at it, you say it looks like it's snowing. Oh wait a minute! I wanted to put. I wanted to put some snow along the edge of these trees. That's right. I wasn't finished with these trees. Put some snow on these branches. I almost forgot to do that part. I just like the way it looks when you put a little line of white on the branches and it looks like s snow has fallen onto it. Do you guys do um, advent calendars? That would be a fun thing, right? make an advent calendar. So the white I'm using is gouache. It's not watercolor. It's reactivated gouache. I'm going to need to get some more, I think. Hold on. All right, let's just put some dots.
I think I've said this before, I like painting snow and I get carried away, so I gotta watch myself, make sure I don't overdo it. <laughs> I think that's enough. I say that and I still do it. I'm still adding them. I have to hear myself say it a couple times. <laughs> All right, I think that's enough. Oh, one more. Yeah, there we go. All right, now I think it's done. The back of the card is not dry yet. So let me dry that and I'll be right back. All right, it's, um, it's all dry. Let's fold it now. Still a little damp, I think. That's okay. And there we have it. There's our winter watercolor landscape painting. Hmm. It looks cold in there. All right, you guys, take care. I'll talk to you later. Bye.